Hey y'all, my name is Annie. Welcome to my channel, Eat, Drink, and Be Reading. And today we are doing another wine and book pairing. And that is with Sangiovese Rosé. I unfortunately am showing you a bottle that you cannot find, which is not great. I'm realizing as I'm talking right now, but this is a special bottle of rosé for me because it is the rosé that taught me to like and enjoy rosé. Before then, I was kind of snobbish in the I only drink red wine kind of way. That has changed, especially since going to Italy last fall. And this is a rosé I had at a wine tasting vineyard there, their wine. And, um, you know, everything tastes better when you're sitting there sipping, looking over a vineyard. But when they offered to let us try the rosé, my husband and I were kind of like, eh, <laughs> okay, sure. When in Italy, you know, um, and then we really enjoyed it and bought a couple bottles and we drank it the other day, our first bottle for National Rosé Day. Um, and so I thought it was the perfect time to do this particular pairing. Um, and this is more of a dry rosé and maybe someday I'll do more of a sweeter rosé, um, but I prefer the dry ones and they are summery. It's June, so that's perfect. They're light. They're fun and for me, they're unexpected uh, because I just didn't think I was gonna like it. I didn't think I was gonna enjoy it, um, but they're unexpectedly complex despite being light and easy to drink. So that's kind of what we're going with. Summary, light, fun, and unexpected books for today. First one is uh, the only book on here that I actually have the physical copy of. And that is My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry by Frederick Bachman. Uh, Frederick Bachman is one of my favorite contemporary authors. He is Swedish. Um, his books are all in translation and they're all fantastic. I've taken to starting each of my every year with my first book being a Frederick Bachman book. And every year at the beginning, it's wonderful and it starts my reading year off great. Um, my grandmother asked me to tell you she's sorry is the story of Elsa. She is seven. She is like best friends with her grandmother. They live in this apartment complex with all these kind of strange characters. Um, some they like, some they do not like. And her grandmother always tells her these just fantastical stories um, and um, she lives kind of both in the real world and in the what's it called it the land of almost awake and the kingdom of Miamas and the characters a lot of them in these lands are based off of the people that live in their apartment complex and then her grandmother dies and she leaves behind a series of letters apologizing to different people and has asked Elsa to deliver them. It is actually a decently easy and light read. So it's told from the perspective of a seven-year-old. So in that way, it's light and her thoughts are entertaining and fun, but it's also unexpectedly deep as it deals with grief and loss and um, learning there's more than meets the eye to the people you encounter. It is excellent. Don't only read Bear Town, read other Frederick Bachman because they're wonderful. The second book is the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society by Mary Ann Schaefer. I do own this book. I have lent it to my mom, so I cannot hold it up for you today. Um, but it is one of my favorite books of the past few years and it, the only, like I always describe it as I just adore it. It is 
charming and sweet and surprisingly easy to read since it's written in letters and the characters are just wonderful and like odd in the best way and you just grow to love them and care for them um, very quickly and so it is again light and in some ways like she the the narrator is hilarious the main letter writer like you, she keeps you cracking up and she's so witty and snarky but again it is it's post world war ii in london and on the island of guernsey where um during the war the nazis had taken over the island of guernsey and they have lost friends and loved ones and so while it is witty and snarky and sweet and charming, it is dealing with loss and what does it look like to start over when you feel like your world has changed completely and it has. And so, yeah, it is both fun and light yet unexpectedly deeper. The third book is Alex Approximately by Jen Bennett. I borrowed this from the library few years ago. I've seen Jen Bennett come around recently um, with a new book called Starry Eyes, I think. And um, it was reminded me of Alex approximately and how much I enjoyed reading it. It is the story of Bailey, who likes this film geek she knows online named Alex. And they have this great relationship and she wants to know him more and she likes him. And um, and then when she moves in with her dad in this surfing town in California, she moves into the same town where Alex lives, but she's too afraid to tell him. So she's living life. She gets a job at a museum where there's a security guard, I think, named Porter, who she like hates, um, but doesn't necessarily stay hating Porter. Um, there is this hate to maybe like or more with him, there's the question about Alex and what does she tell Alex and um, which like part of her heart does she follow? It's this teen twist on You've Got Mail. Um, and so, I mean, it's, it's set in a beach town. It's very summery, very light um, and it's fun. It's a young adult contemporary, so it's fun. It's easy to read, but it's unexpectedly not cheesy. I remember thinking I was, it was going to be super cheesy and it wasn't. It was, um, yeah, unexpectedly uh, not as shallow as you would think that it would be. And I really enjoyed it. Book number four is Liturgy of the Ordinary by Tish Harrison Warren. This is a Christian nonfiction um, where she, go, the author goes throughout her day and takes different, very ordinary mundane tasks like making your bed sitting in traffic, drinking a glass of wine or a cup of tea and different ones in between and shows you how you can make them feel and seem holy. Um, and she does that by incorporating the liturgy that she uses in the Anglican church. This is a Christian nonfiction that is not like theologic, like steeped in theological verbiage. Um, so it's lighter and easier in a sense to read, but it is unexpectedly deep and life-changing for a book that has an open-faced peanut butter and jelly sandwich on the front. Um, I have this on my Kindle, otherwise I would show it to you. But um, yeah, it was. it's one of the more life-changing books I've read. Okay. Book number five is Cork Dork by Bianca Bosker. I lent this to a friend. Um, but I will put a picture up and, and this feels a little bit like cheating because it is a wine memoir. It is the story of Bianca who decides she wants to get her certified sommelier certificate. I don't remember what it's called, but become a certified sommelier. There's a test you have to take and she spends a year spending time with like really intense wine people who are either already sommeliers, um, testing for harder sommelier levels um, or own wine bars and she's work goes to work in the business and just seeps herself 
into the like intense wine world in New York. Um, and so it is really this easy light take on the wine world if you're at all interested in wine and people who are crazy about wine. It's wonderful and funny and just the things she does. She talks about being like slightly drunk all the time because she's doing all of these wine tastings, trying to practice and prep and learn as in like studying her note cards about like vineyards on the subway. Um, but for me, it caused one, this unexpected love of the process of wine and how it's created um, that has made me want to read and study more. And that I, I was really just expecting a fun memoir. But it's also the book that made me take Rosé seriously. I mean, in the sense of like, oh, wine people like Rosé. I may not like Rosé. I do, I do like Rosé. Um, but wine people do like Rosé. Like sommeliers, they don't just suggest it to the like non-wine drinkers, but they really actually enjoy it and understand it. So, I felt like I had to throw that one in here, but it really is a memoir I enjoyed greatly and it's entertaining and fun to read. Last but not least is Love and Gelato by Jenna Evans Welch. I brought this one from the library before we went to visit Italy. Um, we went to Tuscany where this takes place. It's the story of Lena. Um, after her mom passes away, she moves from California to Tuscany outside of Florence because her mother's dying wish was that she gets to know her father who lives there. Um, she doesn't want to be there. She's trying to figure out how to get back home. Um, but then she's given this journal uh, that her mom kept while she lived in Italy and is like trying to relive and like see the things her mom saw through her mother's eyes. She meets another teenage expat named Ren and he helps her kind of discover some of the secrets um, her mom has that she just didn't even know um, that kind of changed everything. So this wine is from Tuscany, very close to where Lena and her father and Rin live outside of Florence. Um, so that's special. Um, and again, it's another YA and so it contemporary, so it reads very light and easy and fun. It takes place in the summer, perfect for a rosé. Um, but despite being that, it is so much more than like, Lena meets a boy in Italy. Like it unexpectedly deals with secrets and grief in a way that is both raw and entertaining. Yeah, there's loss and heartache and anger and mystery and friendship and found family and romance. And it, I enjoyed it way more than I thought I would. Okay guys, I'm gonna wrap it up here cause I don't want this to go terribly long. Drink rosé, drink it this summer, enjoy it. It is um, wine that's easy to enjoy, um, but it's also, I think, um, not taken as seriously as it should be. And you, I recommend Sanchio Basic Rosé. And I recommend these six books. They were fun and wonderful and deep in a way that I did not go in expecting. Um, what books are you reading this summer? Have you read any of these? Are you gonna pick some of them up? Um, let's talk in the comments. I hope that your June is going wonderfully, that it is nicer weather there, wherever you are, than it is here in North Carolina where it is raining all week long. So I probably won't be pulling this out this week. Um, but yeah, like, subscribe, all the fun stuff, and we'll talk soon. Bye y'all.